it just it, it gives you the, the chills. A patient on the brink of death. He had no heart rate. He had no blood pressure. He had no pulse. I mean, think about that. Like something scripted in Hollywood, says intensive care unit nurse Emily Bishop. He was down for close to 45 minutes. During which time, he claims he traveled beyond this world and back. Well, he was telling me that he loved me and that he'd seen the light and that he had seen my mom and my dad. And I lost it at that point in time because I just lost my mom. The week after burying his mother-in-law, Brian Miller returned to work, delivering metal here in Streetsboro. I was feeling fine. And then when I undid the tarp and pulled the tarp off, I started getting a tightness. Probably the cold air or asthma, he thought, until the intense pain started. I'm a truck driver and I think I'm having a heart attack. Brian was having a massive heart attack. His main artery entirely blocked, known as the Widowmaker. He was in obvious distress when we found him. Streetsboro firefighters and paramedics put the hospital on alert. Got to get real aggressive with our protocols and got him to the hospital as soon as we could. Can be life or death. Dr. William Wolf rushed Brian into surgery here at University Hospital's Ahuja Medical Center. We want to open up the vessel as soon as possible. Here's the blockage being cleared and blood flow restored. Man, the pain just started slowly going down. They told him that he did good by getting here as soon as he did, you know, coming quick. Not only did Brian survive the heart attack and emergency surgery, he was already up and talking. He was doing fine until he suddenly wasn't. I saw it come across the screen. I ran in there. Brian was experiencing a fatal arrhythmia called V-fib, ventricular fibrillation. Basically, his heart rate goes like this. And it's just this like scribble. And it's, his heart is just kind of like quivering in there. There's no, it's not able to pump. It's not doing anything. Emily called code blue. CPR, CPR, CPR. Strong, hard, fast CPR. A half a dozen nurses and doctors also responded. Pushing a whole bunch of medications. Um, to basically restart his heart. But at just 41, the husband and father of three was slipping away. The only thing I remember is um, I started seeing, started seeing the light and um, started walking towards the light. While the ICU team tried to revive Brian, he claims he was walking along a heavenly path lined with flowers, then stopped by a familiar face. She was the most beautiful thing when I seen her. It was like the day, the first day I met her and looked so happy. His mother-in-law, Kay, who had just passed away. She grabbed a hold of my arm and she told me, it's, it's not your time. You don't need to be here. It's, we need to take you back. You've got things to go home and do. And after what felt like 15 minutes. Her husband, Jack, was back there waving at me, giving, giving me a smile. And that, and she just told me to go home. It walked me back. But at the hospital, time was running out, or so everyone thought. We shocked him four times, and on the fourth time, it still didn't work. And then, out of nowhere, he got his pulse back. A normal heartbeat after nearly 45 minutes. It's pretty awesome to see. Even more incredible was Brian's condition. So if you think about that, his brain had no oxygen for 45 minutes. So the fact that he is up walking, talking, laughing, everything, I mean, that's amazing. As is Brian's memory of the white light. And I just totally broke down and I like went and sat down because I totally lost it when he told me that. But Brian says there's no reason to feel sad. The experience has changed his entire outlook on life and death there is an afterlife and and people need to believe in it big time. He says he's eternally grateful to the medical staff and his mother-in-law for this second chance. I need to be here a lot more longer. I got I got three wonderful daughters and a wife. And in the end, he says, that's all that really matters. Love, very much love. In Beechwood, Suzanne Stratford, Fox 8 News.